Hey, what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and this is your weekly astrology horoscope for the week of October the 7th through the 13th of 2020. Welcome to Deep Astrology. This is exclusive to HighVibe.tv. Make sure that you check out HighVibe.tv. This is the awesome exclusive spiritual network which has awesome membership for exclusive content, but we also do awesome free content like spiritual dance music, deep love terror every week, and so many other awesome aspects. You can even watch all my different tour videos, different lectures, and all this other awesome content that we do on highvibe.tv. But make sure that you become a member so you get this show in its full form. If you're watching this on YouTube, when we go to the charts, it definitely goes to the audio. But if you're on highvibe.tv, you get to watch this live on the app before it comes as a recording and premiered on YouTube. And of course, you get to see those charts in full form. Also, this is the last week on Sunday. I am ending the sale to all of the astrology courses that I have done, all my master classes from all tier one to tier two and tier three of my astrology courses, plus you get the love master class, plus you get my spiritual e-commerce business schools are all available right now, all in one package. Ride the waves package. Go to highvibetvschool.com or, or you can go to highvibe.tv, click on school and get this awesome package by clicking the ride the waves package. Also, Erica Othin is doing a class starting on Tuesday next week. You're not going to want to miss it. It's called Beyond the Planet. Check that out when you go to highvibetvschool.com. So this is where I'm going to channel the astrology for the week, and then we're going to go deep into the charge brought to you by Astro Gold, which is on all Mac devices. And if you are also on an Android, you can get it, Astro Gold, or check out PC Solar Fire. We're in a Mercury retrograde time because on the 13th, when we actually end this week on Tuesday, Mercury goes retrograde. Now, I know that freaks a lot of people out, and I always laugh in some of my lectures and some of my talks and any of my tours or even all the 15,000 plus videos I've done in my life as an astrologer. I always say that Mercury is the smallest planet. But this is a very unique Mercury retrograde because as we're here on Wednesday doing this show, Mercury's in opposition to Uranus, and it's going to stop and station with an opposition to Uranus for this next two weeks. It will come off this opposition October 20th. So this is going to be this next couple weeks here where our environment, which Mercury rules, our mind as well, but also it is in Scorpio, in the underworld. It is uncovering the, the wants, the needs, and the desires that we truly want to have in our life. Now, I think it's very important for us to remember that the sun is in Libra, and this is a major week where, as Mercury's stopping this week in opposition to Uranus, that's going to throw us through a wing, 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 and what we expect, or out of nowhere surprises, and that can be positive and it can be negative. But I would say that there's a lot of positive if you're willing to understand and see, because you want to use this energy to get the good stuff in life right now, the things that want to fulfill us deeply. That's in alignment with our destiny and it's in alignment with our ultimate path with now Pluto direct and Jupiter and Saturn all together moving forward in Capricorn. But with this Sun in Libra, it's coming into the big three, the squares. We're going to see the Sun square Jupiter this week. And then we're going to see the Sun starting its square to Pluto by the time that Mercury's come retrograde on the 13th. So this is pretty big deal because now the sun is going to have to look at all this stuff in Capricorn. And while we're in a Libra time about relationships and balance and harmony, it's big choices that are going to change our lives forever that we're, we're here to literally do because we will never in our lives see again Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and Capricorn and a square from the sun in Libra while a Mercury is stationing and then stationing retrograde. But even more important, while it's in opposition to Uranus and Taurus, but even more than that, Mars and Aries retrograde in its home sign, squaring Pluto this whole week. Talk about having to get to the bottom of things and identify and make a big change in our lives. And actually, it's like popping a zit. There's a lot of things that are trying to release, while at the same time, I guess good things are coming in. There's nothing better than popping a zit, right? Because I guess it kind of clears up everything. Zip popping is a weird analogy in life, and zip popping itself is also the weirdest thing in the world. But they do pop up in our lives, and sometimes you got blackheads too. It's like, where's your Viore pad? Like, you know, if you remember those old commercials. But I think that this is us wiping a lot of that dirt away in our lives and facing where that is. But in order to bring salvation in many ways to 
the balance, the harmonies, and there's a lot of choice about relationships. Let's not forget Venus is in Virgo. Now, I know the two benefics, Jupiter and Venus, they're both in their fall positions, but there's something about when everything's in its fall position, especially the Sun, Jupiter, and Venus, you know, and Uranus, we tend to want to seek to find the benefic energy in our life. It's always when we have our, I said this on my daily horoscope on High Vibe, I think it was for Tuesday or Wednesday's horoscope. I think it was actually Wednesday's horoscope. I'm like, you know, there's something about when we have too much candy, we just go, oh my gosh, I'm done. I don't want anything good anymore. Even sometimes people can have too much money or some people can have too much of a good thing and it's just like, I'm done with that. I just like, don't want that. I want to restrict myself from it. I want to cut myself off. We're in quite the opposite zone. So it's almost like, you know, like, oh my gosh, if the candy starts to show up in life, you know, it's like, give me some of that. I haven't had a sweet in a minute. So this is a very important time to remember that even though it can feel harsh with Mars and Saturn being in dignified positions and they're both squaring, but now we've got the Mars square Pluto, it's the edge and the desires to make great change that Mars retrograde is is stepping into in a retrograde in its home sign of Aries, this is a whole reapproach, a whole reapproach to how we're gonna go about our desires, what we really want in our life to change, to bring to our destiny. And with the sun getting ready to make its oppositions to Mars here, this is bringing up this major, major situation in our lives of not only the big life changing elements of Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, and Capricorn on your destiny and the harmony and the balance, but that Venus in Virgo was reminding us as all that's going on and the sun's opposing Mars and the re-identification and, and what actions we need to take in order to make change and to come into the harmony and the balance in our life. We have to take action. We can't be afraid, but it's that Venus that's going to try and Uranus and, and Taurus. Well, it's very Uranus, uh, very, very Uranus, it's very ironic. I already am getting ready for Mercury retrograde. It's very ironic that we're having Black Moon Lilith with with Uranus, and it's like we all are ready for the, the, the rebellion within ourselves. We're all ready for the fireworks show. We're all ready for, let's try something different to make our life better. And I, so I think that this is an awesome week, although the undercurrent is that it's extreme, and the undercurrent is if we don't try something different, if we don't re-identify, if we don't go after our true wants and needs, if we don't make choices, if we don't go for the radicality to feel better. If we don't go for, I don't want to use the analogy of a candy, but if we don't go for the things that are our desires and are going to make us feel better, that, are, that we're curious about, remember the North Node is still in Gemini, we're not going to change our environment. And it's always going to be us looking at things like a, through a periscope, like if we're in some submarine, like South Node and Sag, or looking at it through the looking glass, like, but not actually being Alice and going into the hole, you know what I mean? And actually going deep into there of the unknown and the curiosity. So in many ways, we all are, you know, the feminine version would be Alice in Wonderland and the masculine would be like, you know, Indiana Jones and going into whether that's, I would say the last crusade, <laughs> well, I'd find the Holy Grail. But I think that both are the Holy Grails in many ways. And I think that this is a very weird time that I'm even bringing up the Holy Grail because I feel that this is a time in our lives where the whole idea of the Holy Grail was like, you know, King Arthur had sent out, you know, Lancelot and all the knights to go out on the round table to go seek this Holy Grail, yet, you know, there was a failure with it. It was, it was Sir Galahad, it was the son of Lancelot that went out and found the Holy Grail actually, and because he was one with divinity, and, and, and divinity is the path to the Grail in our life, and I think that this is a beautiful moment for you to align into the harmony and balance when you're aligned with divinity. But there's a lot of cross sections that make us in diversion energy from whether you want to call that the other side or the dark or however you want to look at it that is trying to uh, falsify itself as divinity when really it's not. You know, and a lot of that is with Neptune and Jupiter in their sextile this week still. So this is a great door opener for divinity and for understanding the cosmos to understanding maybe your own spiritual channel nature to understanding the collective consciousness. But it also is a, is a, it's, a, it's a portal and doorway to that. But that means that anything can come through that doorway. With Neptune, it's, it's, it doesn't matter how positive the alignment might be or even negative, there still is denial and delusion. And I think that especially with Mercury and stop 
aspect this week and going to go retrograde in Scorpio, there's manipulation tactics by those that have some other agenda that want to take ownership of you or t take ownership of your perspectives and your ideals of what they think is better. It's a time of inclusion right now. It's a time for us to, with Mercury opposing Uranus as well, trying to understand the groups, the people that we align with in our life, but also remembering that we are part of a broader collective. And so I think especially with all this crazy stuff going on politically and so forth, you know, it's like, let's not try and define that from a political aspect. That's the sun squaring all of this Capricorn, especially Jupiter, right? Let's not base it off political belief systems, but base it off the harmony that comes within the human spirit, the divinity. And so that also means that the sun, while it's squaring Jupiter, is going to make a quincunx to Neptune. And so that's why I'm saying like this is where the shade or the deception is, is really within deep of our psyche of that there's these sides that are right and what are wrong when really the evidence points towards the ultimate divinity, the curiosity and the things that you know within the truth that you define within yourself, that the true liberty, because liberty comes from the ability for you to create your own truth for the divinity of yourself to practice your own divinity and connection to divinity. That is true freedom and liberty. And so this is liberty and freedom that we are seeking for to make us feel better. And I think that it's first if whether or not you know how to liberate yourself. You know how to liberate yourself from the chains of the disharmony in your life. Let go of anger with Mars retrograde, square Pluto. This is us crushing anger by letting go of it. This is us with Venus and quincunx also to Chiron, healing through partnerships and values and making sure that we are not getting overcritical or that we are basing things from an ego identification of what critiques that we have on people or that we have on ourselves and that affects our self-worth, that we let those things go. This is a beautiful moment for us to shed off heavy, heavy weight. This is a new timeline that is building for us. We're gonna see the Sun and Mars squaring that bang, right that Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. That's an extreme amount of energy for us. And we have the Sun and Mars in opposition. It's ironic too because it was, if I am correct, and I think I am when I, when I remember this, when the Sun opposed Mars retrograde last time was when Reagan was at NATO telling everybody, or the UN, telling everybody that the only thing that would bring everybody together might be a possible, if the aliens were to attack us, that might bring everybody together. Hmm. There's a lot of inclusion there. There was a lot of how to bring everybody together here. And so I think that this is going to be quite funny on how whatever is about to show up in our lives with Mercury plus Uranus, we don't know. It's more about going into the unknown. It's about going into the curiosity. It's about the experimentation that we have to be willing to take in our lives of letting go of anger, of letting go of the past anger and letting the harmony in and also taking the risks of stepping into popping zits that we don't want in our lives anymore. Letting go of the things that we don't identify with anymore and stepping into things that are crossing a bridge that is better for us, but we might be terrified to cross it. It's okay to be terrified in life, but not really. It just means that we're human and we are vulnerable and we have to understand that. And we have to be okay with the fact that we might be scared to re-identify, not the complete soul. From the day you're born to the day you pass, you are the same soul. You feel within yourself the essence of who you are, unless you get so far drifted away or that you've bought into the campaign of some political party so deeply. This is an important moment for us all as human beings and more importantly within yourself to contribute to the collective by contributing to making your life better, by making your life identify with harmony and balance. And this brings up relationships and tremendously since Venus and Uranus, both of the planets that deal with people, they both are in a perfect harmonic trine and we are also seeing at that same time this Mercury retrograde oppose Uranus that we're trying to figure out in the depths and let go of the things that have maybe hurt us. And it is covering the same area that we saw the Venus retrograde uh, from October and November of 2018. Same degrees, within one degree off, I think, because Mercury retrograde did 11 in Scorpio. And I'll show you in the charts. 
Last thing I want to say before we go into the charts is that's an important moment, 2018. And what happened to us and what we went through with relationships and what we went through with values and there's going to be similar effects that are coming up, but this is us overcoming them by understanding them and changing the environment and being smart as we go in opposed to leading from our Venus qualities then. Now we have Uranus to give us a better and wide perspective view of things that come from our needs and our wants that are worthy of it. We're able to see the worthiness within ourselves and free ourselves from that to be able to connect to the energies and the people, to those that see the worthiness within ourselves because within those mirrored selves that we see, they have liberated themselves into their true values and their true, you know, beautiful essence of what they want to create in this world. And it has nothing to do with getting lost into the political game. It has nothing to do about getting lost into these places that are really manipulating or playing with a lot of situations in our life. This is where we can't manipulate ourselves into doing like, well, maybe I'll just go replay that old karmic story again. Or let me just, you know, this is taking us to a whole new intuitive corner with Jupiter and Neptune and sextile. And, and we need to because Jupiter and Neptune are not going to meet up in a positive aspect until they meet together when Jupiter does come into Pisces. So we're not going to see that until 2022. So this is this last week here of this last moment here of getting the ultimate dream energy and to see it and that your intuition is on the money and you have good luck and you have grace when you follow that intuition and the sun in Libra is going to test your ability to look at the evidence of that and make the, the call and to not judge, but to only choose the things that feel within harmony and balance and things that don't, don't put some sort of judgment on it and throw it into jail, but to put into ourselves this new realignment of justice within and this freedom from within that must be found. Last thing is Jupiter if you actually look at helio astrology, Saturn just entered in about a month ago into Aquarius. Remember, there's no planets retrograde from the helio point of view. We're going to about to show you right now in 3D. But Jupiter, on the day that Mercury stations, on the 12th, enters into Aquarius from the sun's point of view. So now Jupiter and Saturn are in Aquarius, and they're on their way for their conjunction point from the sun's point of view. We are already at the times. If you just build this next week and the week after, this will be, this next two weeks, the, the most grandiose, most intense, most redefining moments of your life. There are things from spirit. Th these are, you know, I don't want to get all Call of Duty on you, but it's like, you know, when you run out of bullets in that game, sometimes you can call up and get a load of stuff, just drop down from a helicopter and get all the stuff that you need. There's a drop, there's like a, or I guess it would be the old, I don't know why I'm getting this from my guides, but there used to be the cartoon of like whenever a, a, a geese or whatever, whatever it is would drop off something. There's just like, there's, 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 there's gifts that are dropping from the sky from God out of nowhere. Take them! Please! Please take them! And don't deny yourself and don't close yourself off because then you won't find that harmony. And these deal with people. This is a lot dealing with the people that we choose. This is a lot dealing with how we can come soul to soul together instead of it being from a three-dimensional point of view of like, oh, well, this works in the reality and that works in the reality and, you know, we have this on paper or this or that. This is a new world. And it's when souls recognize each other and they come together and there is a trust within that. There is a showing up for that. And there is a not backing away from the fear and bringing inclusion into things. And how ironic, it was nine years ago now that I was talking about inclusive astrology. And I feel that this is a chart week about inclusion. Again, if you get lost into the political thing, both sides are not playing inclusion. Because both sides will make you feel that way. Or any side that makes you feel more like they're saying it's inclusive. Is it really? Is it a smoke screen? And so this is where it's recognized from a deep 
interior place is not something that you send a meme about to convince somebody. It's something that you send soul to soul to somebody and they feel it and they see it and they know it. And this could be one of the most greatest gifts we've ever seen in our lives, the sun square Jupiter, if we are willing to open up some of the hardest doors in our life, which is a new path. Let's see what's going on. All right, so here, here in the 3D chart. 3D! Now, the Sun and Mars are going to come to their closest point. All right, when Mercury's coming, retrograde. Meaning from Earth's point of view. So here we are for October the 7th today. And as you, I've been showing you every week, ooh, okay, here we go. Ooh, ooh. Wow, it really doesn't want me to turn that way. Oh, I was, I was backwards. I was flopped on the wrong side of the universe. Oh, so here we go. Look at this. Look at this, the sun is getting ready for what, from Earth's point of view, will be the opposition, right? So as we move the Earth moving forward, right, over these days, we start to see that on the day that Mercury is stationing, ready to come retrograde, we see the Earth and, the, and Mars aligning with the sun, which means that from Earth's point of view, Mars and the sun are in opposition. I'll show you that in charts today. We also are coming ready for that Mercury retrograde because why? Look at Mercury on the 12th. It's ready to start passing the Earth, right? So we don't pass Mercury or Venus. They pass us. And so the other thing is I was talking earlier about Jupiter and Saturn and they're coming together. And look at that from the Sun's point of view. They are together. Look at that. Bang. Look at how far Pluto is now. You know, Pluto's, Pluto's kind of done with the game. Jupiter and Saturn are done with Pluto. They've kind of got all they wanted for, for lunch in many ways, and they're ready to move in, and, and then they're ready to move into Aquarius. And I know that it will show Capricorn here because I use tropicals even in heliocentric astrology. But it's interesting to also see Venus getting ready for the opposition to those points that's coming, but that's not going to happen this week. So if, if we actually take a look... It really is more about this Sun Mars, anger, but also passion. Um, if we were to break this down any, in, in other ways, um, it would also be direction or non direction, like not taking action or non identification. Like, I don't have the identification of, of what I want. That's not going to be because you don't know how to identify, it'd be because you don't know how to drop down Pluto's commitment. And I know it's a lot when Pluto just comes direct because it's almost like, well, I almost maybe want six months to kind of like make sure. But really, we're in a world to where Jupiter and Neptune are in great alignment. And if we were to see this from a three-dimensional point of view, if we do see Jupiter uh, in Capricorn here, we're going to back out. So we see Jupiter and we see Neptune far out right here. So see how Jupiter and Neptune are making that angle, but from... Earth's point of view, and you would have to see Earth as like looking at Jupiter and it's making a 60 degree angle in that sense. So you would see it from like there, but it just pulled me out. So um, quite interesting though. And, and, and as before we go on the charts, I'll just show you that this week, I think the biggest transit is Jupiter. And I think the, the other biggest aspect is uh, Neptune in sextile. And I, I, I think that th this is a portal and doorway that we don't want to, we don't want to not recognize it, right? We don't want to, we don't want to miss out on these great opportunities, especially with, you, you know, Uranus and, the, and Black Moon Lilith together. There's something to say about this, this. This is liberty to find the goodies. This is the liberty that we, that we are almost forced to find and to take action upon. And it's going to be quite a show. So we're going to go into these charts right now. Make sure that you join HighVibe.tv, become a member, so you get access to the show. You can watch it live always on the app on Wednesday nights. And, of course, you get this whole entire show in its full form. If, we're on, if you're on YouTube, of course, we're going to go right now to just the audio. We appreciate you, but please join. Seven-day free trial. We have a month plan, a three-month plan, and we have a six-month plan. And it's 
super, super cheap. I forgot, I, we actually break it down for each day what it costs or each week. But we're talking about like, I think it's $2 a week for the best priced one, if I'm correct. So something like that, it's less than two bucks a week, something like that. So definitely check it out and get access now. So let's take a look. Here we are on Wednesday and it's the 7th of October and we're, I just showed that Jupiter Neptune sextile, but the main deal here has really been that Mercury has been in opposition to Uranus. And, and so this is a lot of things that have come and probably people wise and even worldly wise, it could be either or with Uranus, but there's definitely maybe a little bit of both. Like we've been shocked. There's something that has shocked us. There's something that has brought us to like, a, oh, there's something better in this corner of life. And I think that we have to be, and it's about synchronicity too. Where does that true synchronicity come in? Where it's like, oh yeah, the synchronicity is here. So this is an exciting Mercury station because I feel that things are going to feel more synchronized than ever. But if you're in a more chaotic situation, it means that you're not in alignment. Okay? So that's going to be a little bit of the test this week. Especially, we are seeing Venus quincunx in Chiron. And I would say that, you know, if you're not willing to step into the service of making your life better because you're too wounded from an ego's point of view of how you think it should come and how it should look, well, uh, there's no healing there. You got to drop your ego for a second and come into the beauty and the service. And there's a rhythm that has to come with Venus, right? Uh, in Virgo. Like, and so I think that this is a rhythm that we're finding that we have to be willing to accept. It's a little bit like seeing a treadmill and being like, I don't know if I want to get on it, but you know, once you get on it and you start doing it for 30 seconds to even maybe two, two minutes to three minutes, oh my gosh, out of nowhere, it's like, why was I weird about getting on that treadmill? I got in the pool from five years old to 18 every day pretty much, and man, I don't know what it was. Putting that Speedo on and 5.40 in the morning and the, you know, some of the mornings it was foggy and even though the pool was warm and, you know, I grew up in California, so we were doing this in October and November and it was cold. It was getting into winter, even though our cold's like 60 degrees, but still. There's something about, oh, but once I got in the pool, it was fine. So we were all jumping into our pools. Mars, retrograde, square Pluto. Or are you afraid of getting into the pool? And I would say that this is not a time to be in a fear. A fear of great, deep connection. We're never going to see this in again in our lives. Ever. 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 This is redefining who we are. We, uh, we have not seen Mars retrograde, even at 22 degrees of Aries, since 1941. And there was no Pluto in Capricorn. So... This is a great moment for you to access so much of what Pluto and Uranus tried to teach you in the squares from 2012 to 2015 about the wake up of your individualized self and that you can have the destiny that you want and that you were forced to make radical changes in order to do that or you did it. And this is like a second chance for many people who didn't do that in 2012 to 2015 and have seen the people that led that did it. Look at social media. Look at even how 2020 has been about who's made it through. There's something about that Uranus that was, was, was in Aries from 2011 all the way to 2019 that really people who found their individualized form, it's, and, and, and it might sound crazy because the typical term would be ego, but I would say it's the identification and the will to take that identification and want and need of who they wanted me and step into the destiny that they want to be that got through a major, major portal that transformed their lives so extremely. Now with Mars here, this is almost like it's full frontal now in your face. It was more ethereal and you had to reach for the invisible and the crazy then. And there's somebody who went through that and made that happen. This is me telling you that you can actually physically have it and see it in front of your face. And that's what that Jupiter-Neptune is opening up the intuition in great, great leaps right now. And also this is interesting that all this has been brewing as the North Node and the Moon 
made their conjunction here Wednesday in Gemini and as the moon in Gemini quincunx over to Pluto and Saturn. And so, you know, there's a lot of curiosity and, uh, but then at the same time, there's a lot of inhibition and that makes things like, are you ready to get over your inhibitions and are you ready to take, you know, a better understanding of things? You also have Juno at five degrees here. And I would say that, uh, you know, because five degrees of Capricorn is where we saw the Jupiter solar eclipse with the sun, moon, Jupiter, it was at four degrees, but uh, there's something to say that there's a lot of doorways trying to open up right now for people that we knew in December of 2019. And we also are, well, I'll get into that in a minute here. Let's go to uh, Thursday and October the 8th. We're going to see the moon coming to Cancer, and I think that seeing this moon coming into Cancer is going to be the big three-quarter square of the moon. That's going to happen technically Friday, but we got a lot of cardinal energy, right? So this moon in Cancer has got a lot to, to go through. It's going to have to make squares to the sun. It's going to have to make oppositions to Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. And, of course, it's going to have to make squares to Chiron and to Mars and to Eris. That's a lot. So when it comes to our comforts and when it comes to the feelings that we really want to experience in our life, especially when it comes to relationships, harmony, and balance, and in and, and a, and a better world, we, 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 we're going to have to take a big risk. We're going to have to take a big identification and action-oriented change in order for that to happen. Mercury does come off that opposition to Uranus there. So... It's almost like we got struck with some sort of, you know, lightning bolt idea that, that definitely we're integrating within our lives and saying we need to make a big change in order, and it has a rebellious nature to it, or it has a, a wild nature to it. Like, this might sound crazy, but Jupiter and Neptune are and still in sextile, and, and then they're getting closer with Jupiter, starting to make that, that, that faster speed towards that Neptune there at 1850 and um, 1827. Also, it's while... Black Moon Lilith and Uranus are still together. And, and so this is about f allowing ourselves to free ourselves to the liberties that are going to make us feel better in our lives and uh, getting over any of the uncomfortable elements of things. Like if you're just going to try and try and play this comfortably, that doesn't mean it has to be chaotic because there's great rewards when we get off of, and I said this in a uh, Instagram this week. So Capricorn is the mountain, right? So it's the mountain goat, the, the, sea, the, the mystical sea goat that climbs the mountain to reach the top. And Capricorn is where you put the flag at the top, which would be your goal. Well, the bottom of the mountain is Cancer. Okay, this is what we would call base camp. Or, if you were like me back in the old days when I used to go snowboarding, like I would snowboard and I, I used to rip it. But I would enjoy hanging out base camp with like a hot chocolate or a coffee and check out all the snow bunnies. At the time, a lot of my, my buddies used to make fun of me. But that was my goal. But I'm saying that right now, what are the insecurities emotionally that you're holding on to that are not allowing you to reach up? Because one of the things I said is, now that all this energy... Um, and I said this on my Instagram, but now all the center and Facebook, now that Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto are together and they're all direct forward, it's like, what are you writing? What is being etched in your karmic story? What are you writing that will be left behind forever? And I know that, you know, there's a lot of people in the spiritual community who say that, you know, don't put so much stress on yourself to achieve something or to reach something. You just, are, you just need to be. Well, what if just to be is also to achieve? What if just to be is also that you have a mission and that it takes a long journey since Saturn entered into Capricorn, if you don't remember, in December of 2017? So the goat is way high up the mountain and there's those that left that emotional situation of comfort and took risk because risk is reward. And you'll never know anything unless you take the choice and the risk. So this is moments where we have to get out of our comfort zones to get the ultimate gifts because Jupiter and Neptune are sextile and there is this window 
this portal that's opened. And with Venus and Virgo, we can't get too over analytical about it. It's in fall position. Let's not, let's just remind you, right? Like, look, look at the planets, like Venus, negative one in Virgo. It's at fall. Jupiter, another benefic, negative two. The sun's negative three. That's three fall positions. And so even though the moon's in Cancer because it's home, to kind of add it, it's still got to face the two malefics. And they're plus seven, plus eight. So I just am trying here to tell you that, you know, th this is a time where the moon's hitting the two malefic planets coming into Thursday, but mainly it's going to be Friday when we see the moon here at 14 into 15 starting to square the sun at 16, while also the T-square is forming with Jupiter, right? Because Jupiter 18, the moon will actually be at 16. I'll just write that in. I didn't put that in the chart. But so there's a T-square forming to the sun that's in Libra about relationships and the emotional courage we have to have to open up the doors. The good thing is there's the nice sextile, which means the moon will trine over to the sun, I mean, uh, to Neptune, and the sun starting its quincunx over to Neptune. And I would say that this is kind of a weird chart, right? Especially with the moon that's done with its Chiron square and it's getting ready to square with Mars, it's getting ready to oppose Pluto, it's getting ready to oppose Saturn, it's a lot. And so the moon does make a good aspect to Venus too. A lot of good, a lot of good aspects to Venus this week. A lot of good ones. And, and, and actually all week, including a moon-Venus conjunction on the day of the 13th, at the end of the week. And, and, and with the sun being in Libra, before we reach the retrograde, before we reach the square to Jupiter, I feel that Friday, October 9th is a day for you to make leaps and bounds and, 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 and say, you know what, let's go. And, and there is black moon uh, Lilith still on Uranus. It's still in opposition to Mercury as it's stopping. And, and, and we have to be curious and we have to go into the depths to find out, to pull out Uranus like, and pull out the good stuff and bring it to our lives and bring it to our stuff. But if, we, if we're too comfortable and we're too afraid of saying the truth, North Node and Gemini, Mercury and Scorpio opposing Uranus, if you're too afraid to say the truth of what you really want and you're too afraid to take the action because what's Mars going to be doing on this day? Wow. Look at Mars. Is that 22, 24? Well, what does that mean? Well, let's look at that Pluto. 22, 29. That square has happened coming into that square from the moon. So we have to pop the zit, which is uncomfortable, but it's going to blow out the things that we don't want in our life to allow the beautiful things to show up, like beautiful skin like the Leo King. I mean, it's just gorgeous, right? <laughs> Joke. Not joking. No makeup. So, the other thing that interests me about Mars retrograde, as it is squaring Pluto, that you must go down into the temple. You must go into, and this is not temple run, the game, too, where you're running away from all these crazy things, and if you fall off, you're, you're over. That would be a typical freak out of a, a moon in Cancer Square, Mars retrograde square, you know, the sun in Libra opposed Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn. This is not a temple run. This is a temple success if you're ready to drop the truth to yourself. Exit or close doors that you don't want to because Mars retrograde at 22 means that it is going to make amazing aspects to the nodes. 22. Wow. So, action from a whole different angle and bringing that into our sphere and our personal lives are changing emotionally to receive a better emotion, but that's where the pressure is and the pressure's on the sun because it's all hitting, right? It's all hitting the sun. It's all hitting Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn too. So this moon, no matter how much it wants to put up a fight, it's almost like, okay, because I'm not bagging on cancers, but we have to understand cancer energy. And what's the one pitfall of cancer? Well, it gets too comfortable and it, you know, trying to get a cancer friend to go to a party that they're, and they're still in bed at 9 p.m. is not easy. It's not easy. No, I'm too comfortable. I think I'm going to stay at home tonight. You know, like it's like, 
we're all going, let's go. Like, the, like all these planets are telling, right? Mars is like, come on, let's go. And the North Node and Gemini is like, we got curiosity. We've got identification. And it's time to make a big change with Pluto. And here's the Sun in Libra. The judge is like, we need to figure out how balance and harmony now. I am gaveling this into session. And it's like, oh my gosh, this moon of cancer. It's like, if you were going to just try and flop and play lazy, when there is no nodes in both systems, in Cancer and Capricorn. That was the difference at the beginning of the year. Let's hunker down and play lazy and just wait till we get to the next round. Well, that's over. And now we're dealing with heavy, heavy cardinal energy and we're dealing, definitely dealing with the Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn without a node. That's the difference. The North Node came in on May 5th. And that came into Gemini with the South Node coming into Sag. And in May 5th, that's when these were all going retrograde. And Saturn was in Aquarius. It wasn't even in Capricorn. So this is the first time Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn are direct this close with no node, meaning it is way more powerful. It also means that the Moon has to get over its uncomforts by making better choices, by stepping into its ethereal destiny and not being afraid of it. So when we come to Saturday this weekend, we are going to start to see this Venus-Uranus trine. So Venus will be at nine degrees. We're going to see the trine to Uranus and Black Moon Lilith. And so that's what I'm saying is when it comes to a betterment in our life and when it comes to the great things in life, and this is the day before the sun uh, starts to square Jupiter, right? It's actually going to be starting to happen that day. You're going to start to feel it. It's like, if you don't believe with two fold planets and the two biggest planets, although the sun is not a planet, but the sun, square Jupiter, the two biggest entities in our solar system, squaring, in their worst places. If you're not ready to make it the greatest, grandiose ball of all time of trust, within, you know that what the gavel should be dropping on to a much more positive life. And if you're not willing to also open up the doors to your destiny and make real what might seem hard, but it's not hard. It's like responsible choices of this is a hell yeah responsible choice. With Venus trying Uranus here, it's liberation and excitement and it's a party to feel better and to find the things that make us feel good. But also it's in relationships, if it's not connected on the same worlds, like to be very frank and honest, even though it's not a square, it's a trine. So it means that people connect or they don't connect. And Venus trine Uranus people like me, <laughs> I was born with this transit just in Leo and Sag. Um, I, I, I have to feel that ultimate, all the pieces need to come together in order for me to feel that greatness. But maybe it's not a critical thing, like maybe this Venus and Gemini or in Virgo might be. I'm Venus Leo. It's just like, I just need to see that you're willing to show up for love, whether it's every part of my life that makes me feel good. The car I drive to, the way the set is right now, to, it needs to feel like everything comes together. And then when it does, I just, I, there's nothing better feeling than watching the show just con come together. And so this is a moment where everything can come together in our lives. But you have to be willing to stop connecting to things that aren't coming together. Why do you think Mars is squaring Pluto during this time? Why do you think that the moon just squared the sun? But now the moon is going to have to deal with the square to Mars and the moon's going to have to square, deal with the opposition to Pluto and Saturn. Next month, we're going to see Saturn and Pluto way off, right? So it's going to be like, oh, okay. This is, this is a big one. And Mercury comes to its stationary position of 11 degrees. And, and this is weird because this is the zone that we saw the, the Venus retrograde of October. I think it was October 10th of 2018 that started at that degree. And here we are on October 10th, 2020. Thought about that one yet? The, that both transits at that time and now are great.
But this is where you're going to have to get over the trust and your mind is going to have to realize and not freak out in opposition to Uranus that, well, maybe it will be something I try to connect to and it will disconnect from me. No, Venus is saying differently because now Venus is going to catch up to Mercury and make sextiles to Mercury and say, it's almost like Mother Teresa coming in and be like, hey, don't worry, I've got you. This poor Mercury in Scorpio, I'm going to be honest, I feel bad for it. It's, it's, it's stopped. It's got horrible uh, uh, you know, opposition to its higher octave Uranus and Taurus. And so it, 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 it has trust issues. Or it's, it's not willing to see the truth if you're in the opposition. You have to look at the opposition and be like, is there a better connection? Yes, there is. Are you willing to look within yourself and be honest with yourself and say, I'm willing to take that better road and it might be scary. I might have to give up something. I might have to drop something. I might have to drop a fear. I might have to drop an attachment in order to gain. And with Venus helping this and with Uranus now getting support by Venus, and Venus is also trying to support Mercury. So Venus is looking at both. She's like, oh, I know Venus and Virgo wants to clean it all up. Like I know how to make this thing operational where it didn't become operational October 10th through November of, well, it was the 40-day cycle. So about around November, what, like, I think it was like 25th or whatever of uh, 20, or yeah, November, just around November 20-something of 2018, um, when Venus went direct at 25 degrees of Libra. It was in 2018. It, 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 there was something about it that didn't make it operational. This is making it operational. This is almost like seeing that this is not the facade of the good things. This is the real shit of the good things. And don't take it lightly. But if you are going to not be willing to look with deep, deep within yourself and go, and especially I'm just going to tell those out there in all relationships, especially romantic ones, if you're in one, you have to look deep. Or if you're pursuing one, it's like the, the question of, is this really that great? Venus will let you know if it's really operating the way that you want to. Do you want to strive for the highest? Remember, I showed you the, the, the whole thing with the, the sea, the, the, the mystical sea goat that's Capricorn that reaches the top of the mountain. Is, that the, is this the tallest that you want to go with this person? Do you, see, do you see that there's more steps above or do you just see that this is, it's plateaued? You know, it, it, we've been seeing so many graphs lately, whether it's from, you know, the issues that we're seeing in today's world to the economy, right? But like, you know, it has it been like, has it been like, kind of like, oh yeah, but then it's just flatlining. This Venus Uranus is trying to say, I want to see spikes that go up. And that's your big quest. Uranus and Black Moon Lilith. Are you ready to shake things up? It's going to be the movers and the shakers with Mars square Pluto, with Uranus and Mercury in opposition, with Black Moon Lilith connected to this. It's the movers and the shakers, the ones that are willing to shake and bake, baby, that are going to make it through this one and amazing places. And because it's a shake and bake time, because this is the closing of a portal. It's the closing of a portal. We saw Jupiter and we saw... Um, we saw Neptune square in 2019. That was a weird portal. This is completing the weird portal. And this is also the last time that we are seeing Jupiter and Neptune in their sextile in Capricorn. Saturn and Neptune are done. That was a big portal. And that was in 2019. And they were in their home signs. That's over. Jupiter is trying to wrap up the Christmas gift and give you the gift or not. And whether or not you're ready to use this portal, to actually use it, to be honest, to see if you have manipulated in yourself into bullshit. In a crap that is not taking you in the right place in your life at all. Or if you're just going to be in denial completely. Because the sun square Jupiter in their fall positions will bring the fall to people who are afraid to look at other things in life. With Mercury opposed Uranus, with the sun square Jupiter, because you just want to sit in a shitty position. I just want, you know what, I'm okay with this. I'm going to sit in crap more. Really? That's really what you want? People who have issues with identification, people who have issues with taking action upon things, people who have issues with taking a better journey through curiosity 
and being willing to go to the data and the fact of, yeah, I'm really not excited about this that much. I'm actually more excited about this. Why don't you just trace your own phone and your searches? Why don't you actually, if you want to get real cryptic and real Mercury and Scorpio, I'll play out Mercury and Scorpio for you, oppose Uranus and Taurus. Who do you look at on your social media more? If I, I'm calling out people who are in relationships and stuff, or maybe even like really dating someone serious, who are you looking at more than the person that you're talking to? <laughs> it might not even be about them, but the energy that that person, that you might not even have met, or who, whatever, right, that you actually want and are you willing to go down into the temple to see if that's possible in your life or are you going to hold on because that you're got trust issues that you connected to something and i just got to stay connected to this this is about disconnection and connection and only connection to the ultimate good that gets you to the best place that you can go to the highest goals to the highest ambitions and getting rid of your emotional issues and shit because this moon in cancer is not going to be having a good day on on saturday when it opposes saturn when it opposes pluto if it's only going to feel comfortable and not face the truth of big decisions that are about your path and the best path for you and square Mars retrograde because what you're too afraid to take action you're too afraid to nip something in the butt and say you know what I'm gonna nip this now I'm gonna get it I'm gonna be honest I'm gonna say exactly what I need to say Mercury in, in opposition to Uranus and, and it's gonna cause what you might think is chaos but what it's doing is removing chaos out of your life because you're in a chaotic situation the more that you're allowing yourself to be in a fault position. And I'm just saying this because I was born with dignified planets. So I'm just trying to tell you that as a dignified soul, I don't ever fucking take anything that has fallen energetically. Sorry to say, I don't. And I'm not going to feel bad saying that. But I'm so good and so laser focused when I'm an astrologer and I do a reading or if I pick up on somebody's energy, if I do a reading for somebody, that I can see right through somebody that chooses to play the falled person. And that's another part of this week. Are you going to play the falled position in your life? I'm just safe here. I'm going to take what's okay. And I'll be honest with you, when you actually have your Uranus and Taurus being up there, being like a scientist and looking and seeing if it's actually valid and if it's actually worthy and with Mercury and Scorpio scanning to see if it's actually your carnal desires, uh, really? Is it? It's very easy right now to know what you're hungry for in life, energetically, relationship-wise, emotionally, and what you're not. And if you're playing the whole, I'm going to play the middle ground with the sun and Libra, which is a fault position, square Jupiter, and not going for the ultimate big wish that you want, well, you'll just be left with mediocre. Because Jupiter and Neptune are finishing their sextile this week. You have to remember that Jupiter and Neptune made a square in 2019. Jupiter and Neptune made their trine when it was in Scorpio in 2017. Into 18. We're not going to see Jupiter and Neptune make some good aspects for two years, for, for, for this, well, not two years, but yeah, it's about, it's almost there. It's about a year, you know, till 2022. And, and to me, the semi-sextile of Jupiter and Neptune is just like, okay, like the benefits of the gift, the excitement where the gift still feels exciting and great and opening. And then there's something even more powerful coming with Jupiter in, in, in exaltation, meeting with Neptune and its digni dign dignification in uh, 2022. But I, I, I just want to say that it's like, don't waste this week. In many ways, you know, and I've even said, this is actually, I'll give you the honest truth as an astrologer's point of view, this is not a fucking easy week at all. But it's ironic that I'm trying to show you all the benefits of this week that are everywhere. But the hardest part is like whether or not you're just going to continue to keep holding on to crappy gifts and saying, no, God, I don't want the great gifts. Or I'm too afraid to take a gift that God's showing me that, that there might be a path and there might be a lot of unknown, but there's a curiosity. And you got it. This is why I'm saying Alice in Wonderland and I'm saying Indiana Jones from a masculine point of view. Like it's time. It's time to go. In. And even Alice in Wonderland left her cat. Even good old Indiana Jones at points leaves people 
to get the job done and get to go where he really wants to go. And he finds, he finds the great loves of his life, and, 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 and Alice finds the great love that she was looking for, which was her fantasies, which was that there was another world that was out there that was different than the one that her mother was trying to teach her in the book, Saturn. So this is a very intense weekend because it's connecting with Mercury stationed right where Venus went retrograde, stationed retrograde, and it's exactly two years to the date, and it's with Moon in Cancer, squaring Mars, squaring the Sun, opposed Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter and Neptune are making within a less than 10 minute sextile. You don't wanna fuck this one up, guys. So when we come to Sunday, Sun square Jupiter day, and while, of course, the Sun will quincunx Neptune, the moon will be in Leo. So let's not forget about this moon in Leo. This moon in Leo is going to be tense. It's going to square Uranus and Black Moon Loth and square Mercury. While Venus is looking at Uranus and looking at Mercury. So it's kind of interesting because the, the moon in Leo is wanting to feel the goodness and feel a good time. But it, again, it will not find happiness unless it's a wild and crazy change in situation for a better life and that you're willing to accept the truth and express the truth and change your reality, the one, that, the one that brings your carnal hunger and desires together? Or are you just playing, I don't know why I'm going to say this, but are you playing, are you playing mediocre? I hate to get all Leo King, and I know it's going to trigger the hell out of people, but that's what I do. And that's how God, and that's how my guides did it. Are you a peasant? You're, you know, and it has nothing to do about money. It has nothing to do about any of that. Because it's not about being king. It's about a peasant chooses to be a peasant. A person chooses to be whoever they are at the lower end of the spectrum and at the higher end of the spectrum. Are you done choosing peasant style life? It's a sun in fall position. I'm going to get a little medieval astrology on you motherfuckers. It's square Jupiter in its fall position. And this is the moon in Leo wanting the regal energy emotionally, but it's square Uranus. No, I will not let you have that emotionally unless you're willing to make a wild and crazy with Black Moon Lilith radical new change in story. Crazy one. Re rebellious and the liberty to, you have to be willing to liberate yourself to better and higher positions like the elevator up higher. And it's nine degrees, it's action degree oriented. And then with the square to Mercury and Scorpio, are you gonna try and tell me emotions? You want regality and to feel good and true happiness, but you're too afraid because your mind's somewhere else into a desire that you don't have, but you're too afraid to face it because you're afraid of that radicality. This whole week is because you're afraid of random and you're afraid of radical and you're afraid of the radicality of a radical change in your life. So the sun square Jupiter in fall position is, I feel like I'm just left with coal. But that's because you choose coal. That's not because coal was delivered. Coal was delivered and you chose to keep coal through the moment when the sun squares Jupiter, remember that the sun made an opposition to Jupiter last, and actually, actually, if we want to go to the trine, the sun did trine Jupiter, right? When it was in Virgo, Jupiter was retrograde, though. Jupiter's direct now. So, the squares of Jupiter and, 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 and the sun are, 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 are for those that, are you going too far and mediocre? Are you restricting yourself? of a great reality in life and harmony or relationship wise this is tapping into romance extremely venus trying your honest venus sextile mercury it needs something that is not monom not monogamy but mononymous if it is mediocre and it is just like bland if it's just like there's no salt and pepper there's no corn pop. <laughs> Where's corn pop? I don't know what to tell you. No, nothing's going to be popping, I'll tell you that. It won't be popping. You're going to realize that the microwave couldn't even pop those kernels because Regal's cinemas went out of business.
Because you chose to not, to not, to, to stay a peasant. In the Bible, they say that the earth will be inherited by the meek. Now, that doesn't mean weak. There's, there's, there's different ways to interpret it, from humble. But humble doesn't mean that you have to be a humble peasant. It's the humbleness of allowing yourself to be in integrity with the divine that wants the ultimate for you. And if you are going to play and manipulate yourself that you are being meek and humble for something that sucks royal ass, then you're not meek, you're weak. And this is the test with Mars and the nodes aligning on who has the power and the strength to go towards curiosity, and who just wants to keep going and playing out stories that hopefully maybe one day it'll go better. If it didn't go better by this week, it's never going better. The things that have been going better and have been going great, fuck yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna keep going. But there is a stop from the universe that's gonna ask this week with Mercury stopping in Scorpio, where are you lying to yourself? Are you not willing to look at the data and the facts? Are you not willing to look at alternative, better quality of people and situations that will bring you the, to the ultimate place? Or are you just going to continue to think that, you know what, I'm just going to keep playing the same tune? Even though I know underneath everybody in the collective, they are itching. Everybody has got an itch that they feel like that can be scratched. But is the people that you choose able to scratch it the right way? Monday! Well, that moon is going to be at 22, so it's aligning with the nodes. Gosh, we got a moon train Mars. We got Uranus still at nine. We got Venus and Mercury. Oh, you know what? That environment is going to be either really good or really like, oh, man. Did I miss the boat of the happiness train and the curiosity train because I just wanted to play safe? Mars is done with the square to Pluto. So it's on its way to start to square Mars or Jupiter. And so Mar Mar <coughs> the warrior is about to found out, find out on how courageous it is based upon the beliefs of risk for a greater life. In greater situations. And I'm going to be honest, and I don't want to put people in something as greater people, but pheromones matter with Mercury and Scorpio. Pheromones matter with Moon and Leo. Pheromones matter with Uranus and Taurus. Pheromones and beauty with Venus and Virgo. You've got to be a little bit more criti cr critical about what you're taking on in life. It better have all the fucking, you know, it better have all the check marks next to it, right? Like, fuck yeah, it's got this, she's got that, he's got this, but fuck yeah, oh my God. And it should feel like a fucking radical I'm going to be honest, it's going to feel like a radical fucking electrified storm of crazy amazingness. Or you're trying to suppress that and it will be a radical chaotic storm within yourself that you're trying to hide with Mercury and Scorpio. And you're too afraid to confront people. You're too afraid to confront people about the truth. Because... You're going to have to face things face to face. I recommend that you go watch, you watch the music video and you listen to the song from Daft Punk face to face. But the whole, I, the whole part of that whole entire song is that we put ourselves to end the suffering when we just don't face things face to face. And, and, and this is about us facing everything that we need to face face to face to make ourselves better in our life. And we have to be diplomatic in ourselves. And it's very difficult because look at that sun at 1949. And I'm doing this at 9 a.m. Oh, that's going to start opposing Mars. And this is where this, the, we are at the point where the Earth is going to be closest to Mars, right? So, it, you, you know, this is going to be where people get really angry because they chose to play mediocre and be weak and not the true identity of meek which I gave you earlier, and now I'll just say that is more of my 
way of putting it and how I communicate it and how I register it from the Bible to, to using astrology and looking at fault positions. And with this moon in Leo, with the nodes, remember the nodes serve the king and the queen, the sun and the moon. And what is the sun and the moon doing on Monday, the 12th, the day before Mercury retrograde? The sun's even making good aspects to the nodes and the moon. This is karmic destiny that will be either frustrating or holy cow, thank you, God, for the gift you gave me of stepping into my own needs and wants that you dropped off with Jupiter sextile Neptune. By the way, Jupiter's at 1847 on Monday and it's now done with the official sextile and moving away. Mercury and Venus? You'll know. The environment is either the most beautiful ever and you're like, I want to eat it in a, <laughs> however you want to put it way, right? Like, I, you know, like, however you want to put that. Or not. This is also going to be the biggest test on people who even want to make, do you even want to be part of this whole like awakening and do you even really want to do anything about it or are you just wanting to just go live your normal life? And are you just, really because people who just want to play their normal life, they're just choosing mediocre, 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 me, it's not possible. I, you know, I can't do that. I can't face to face my truth. I can't face to face what I really want. I, and every opportunity by Jupiter and Neptune is there. It's just whether or not you're going to, reach for it and take it and take action upon it and face it. Or, you know, you've chosen already in your own court that you're not worthy. Tuesday, Mercury retrogrades. So I'm doing the chart for Mercury retrograde at 6.05 p.m. East, uh, Pacific, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, and the moon will be on Venus. How much more relationship Venus aspects? I can't fucking get any and Uranus stuff. Even the moon's going to try Uranus. Like, I can't not, as Mercury is coming retrograde, I cannot tell you that this is about the people we are choosing in our life. That is everything. And actually, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to show it right now because I want to give the credit to Michael Luton for this amazing, amazing way that he, as an astrologer, is putting this out using Chiron to understand how to get through this. I'm giving you my way, but I, it very relates in this most similar way. And you can put this up on camera. Find Michael Luton on Facebook. What's interesting is this, and he has a talk that you can get. It's really good, but it's Chariklo, busy at work with Chiron to help humanity successfully make the jump. Only the female can save us now. It was the wife of Chiron. So who we choose as our partners, as our fe the feminine though, because Chiron's a masculine. That, if we really were to think about a wounded healer in war, I'm going to use just a totally, it's, it's kind of a Chiron analogy because it's kind of hard with Chiron. There's so many stories, but I'm just like giving you, I'm kind of taking all the stories and mixing it into my own. If there was a wounded warrior in the middle of a war, what do you see in all the old war movies? They pull out that picture, that damsel that they love so much. And they kiss it and they look at it and they look at it as like the most ultimate and most beautiful thing to keep them going to survive. If you don't have that in your relationships, <laughs> really? You think you're going to make it through when all the fucking bullets are firing and shit? Mars opposition the sun and the And I'm going to be honest because I got to be real. This week is fucking chaotic. But it's only peaceful for those that take the leap into the ultimate new dimension of I'm going for the gold of the most amazing. I'm not going to play this mediocre anymore. I'm going to pop the zit of something. Like, are, we, are you going to really walk around with a fucking zit? Don't, don't try and use quarantine 2020 times and be like, well, it really doesn't matter because I don't see that many people. 
You still have to own integrity. Even for this show, I went and showered for the show and I get ready for the show and I show up as if I am going into the most ultimate because of value in myself. And that's Taurus. And if you don't understand Taurus, you don't understand yourself. You don't know how to create and you don't know how to manifest and you are gonna be looking at yourself deeply in reflection with this Mercury retrograde in opposition and realizing at the bottom of yourself that you don't have the guts and that you don't have the willpower to step into a better life. You don't know how to be abundant and you don't have abundance because you don't know how to step into it in yourself. You don't know how because you would rather play mediocre because you're too scared to face to face people People. You're too afraid to face yourself and the issues that you have within yourself of being abundant, of being powerful, and that's Mars sextile the nodes. That's Mars retrograde Pluto. That's hardcore truth. That is really intense truth. That you don't have the grit to do it. That you don't have the will to do it. That you don't have the power to do it because you're too judgmental in yourself and you also think that calm and harmony and all that thing is by taking non-action in life. And by not going for the best and not taking any action for the identity that you want to be and the character that you want to be. And you don't have to be a shithead to do it. You don't have to be a bad person to do it because you have to be the best person to do it. And the best are the best because they are the best. And the worst are the worst because they choose to be the worst. And for some reason, it is... This weird freaking asteroid, the wife of Chiron, in its alignment at the end, you should listen. I don't want to give it all away because I want to give Michael Luton some love with his amazing lectures and also some of his talk stuff that he's done. He, did, he does write it on his Facebook, though. But it is interesting that she is hanging out at the very end of Capricorn into Aquarius where all this shit's about to go down with Jupiter and Saturn and we're going to change gears. And there's something about who, and I've been saying this for fucking years without even knowing this information that just came about to me in the last week. I have been telling you all that the fucking relationships that you choose, and it happens to be romantic, and I might sound like I'm going ludicrous right now, but it is Uranus and Black Moon Lilith opposed by Saturn and Mercury on my Saturn, so I can get away with this shit. I am here to tell you right now that if you don't believe in the twin or if you don't believe in the ultimate soulmate shit, then good luck in your mediocre life because this shit is about you and whether or not you are opening up to allowing that to happen or not. Or if you have a placeholder in there, that is not it. That will not allow that in this passage of Jupiter and Neptune when finally the doorway and the portal opens for such an event to happen in your life to help us get through the craziest times of transition into a world that we all never thought that we would have to transition into. And if you're still playing it like it's okay, pfft. go check out Michael Luton. Last chart I have for you all is, well, and I, and I, and I have to break this down this last day. Because as Jupiter is going to be at 1855, it literally is the last day of Jupiter and Neptune in sextile. So the portal is with Mercury retrograde and the sun is opposing Mars on the day, literally, that Mercury comes retrograde. Exact. Are you going to fuck this one up? Because you're too afraid to step into what you want. And especially those that choose a partnership that denies them of their true essence of themselves uh, because of this person and I got to be with them and they don't like me because I smoke my jewel, because of whatever that I talk too loud or whatever. And you put yourself as mediocre the second you keep fucking staying in that bullshit. You really think you're going to go far this life? In this new world? Because in quarantine world, with not much happening, you're willing to take crap? I know I might sound harsh. I already know I already am triggering some people, but Mer I, Mercury's on my Saturn on this one. And I have a responsibility in this life as Saturn and Scorpio and Mars and Scorpio to give you the most deepest truth ever. This Mercury retrogrades on my Saturn. This Uranus is opposed to my Saturn. And I know deep within my, it's not even my, my, my veins or my soul. It's in my deepest truth of the shadow of the desire 
to attract the best manifestations of our lives with people is this week. And if you don't know how to have a good avatar, and you need to look in the mirror and be like, is this the avatar that's going to attract the kind of like people? And, and, and it might not be love, but this is about love. So you got to kind of like hash that stuff out, relationship people this week. Make sure that, you know, you two feel that it's the ultimate. And if it was fucking war, that you'd be looking at that picture and crying over it and wanting you every day. And if it's not that case, get the fuck out of it. That's my fucking truth to you. Get the fuck out. What is your honest? It's the big fuck you. You know, you're not willing to go higher. It reminds me of George Carlin. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? What is Mars retrograde telling the sun as it is a dignified Mars opposed to the sun that's in fall position? Wake up. Don't negotiate. Don't negotiate against what you want. Negotiate and make sure we're getting what we want and we're getting the identity and the character and that we're getting the beliefs and we're getting that portal that spirit has come in to align with our greatest good and our greatest spirit. Don't negotiate us down the moon on venus do make sure that we emotionally receive and feel good from a reality that fully has the check marks marked no negotiation it doesn't mean you have to go fight it just means i'm not going to take that deal the second that we say we're not going to take a certain deal the right deal pops up the second that we're going to take the ultimate manifestation test of whether or not we are going to own the best in ourselves and we are going to allow the best to come into our life is the question of this retrograde. It is the question of the next three weeks from this portal of literally your reality becoming the most reality you've ever wanted in your life or God damn, why did I choose this fucking one? What the fuck did I just do? Last chart, actually it's two charts, but it's just quick. Helio-wise, on Monday, the day before this Mercury retrograde, we have in the Helio, blowing my mind, Jupiter 000 comes into Aquarius, starts to meet up with Saturn in the same sign. Woo! It's time for liberation, people! If there was any time, and I know I might sound crazy, but you know, when the twin flame vibes and all that stuff, we have not seen Jupiter and Saturn right here conjunct in Helio with Pluto close by. And it's very ironic to me as well at the same time that Mars is done with the squares in those places, okay? And look at Venus there in, in Cancer. She's done with the square to Chiron, but that means earlier this week you have to face on a Dharma level, you have to face the emotional issues that you have with things that don't look that great. Or are you just afraid to heal yourself because you have some sort of ego issue and you're afraid to step into what you really want? And on the day that Mercury retrogrades at the exact time when you look at this, why is Mars in the Earth, or sorry, the Sun in the Earth, or sorry, the Earth and Mars closest? Look at that, Mars and the Earth, 2121. We are the closest we could be to Mars. And so, you know, are you ready to step into who you want to be? And I know ego triggers people and identity triggers people, but that's what this is about. And that is what will bring the harmony. Action does bring harmony. The idea that harmony is natural is dis disgusting, in my opinion, because of the fact that Aries comes before Libra, that there is no way, there is no way, there had to have been a big bang, or there had to have been some sort of beginning or start to something, and an identification of what came through the universe, that of what was to create the harmony. There's no other way. So the chicken did come before the egg, if that makes sense. Because it's a chicken, and it's a, the identification that it turns out to be a chicken. The idea of a chicken, the second thing would be, well, how does the chicken come? The egg. 
So the chicken did come before the egg in the concept of God's eye. And so that's, that's, that's where, are you playing it as I'm playing the egg or are you playing the fucking chicken? You're stuck when you're in an egg. At least a chicken can walk around and squawk around. I probably act like a chicken right now. But with Jupiter down, Aquarius and Helio and Saturn there, liberation is everything. And it's no I, I, irony at all that we're having Uranus and Black Moon Lilith. I just realized this camera was not even focused on me the whole time, but I'll deal with it. That it's this, the eyes are just focused on here. That even me in that kind of case, it's like, boom. It's like, it's time for people to liberate themselves and create the new world now. And are you this week sure on what you're bringing in to build that? This is a new timeline. The heaviness is over if you're ready to leave the heaviness. And everything that came with that heaviness, there is something about this extreme new radical new story. And that, 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 that you have to be will, willing to start having all those talks with all the people. I had one of the most liberating talks of my life today. And it's about soul to soul level about contracts now. And, and, and knowing that soul contract and knowing that it's there and appreciating the soul from within the soul and being like, fuck yeah, and making it a win, win, win for all people. But if you're too afraid to have those combos and you're too afraid to face those things and you're too afraid to step into that kind of energy and make it good on all levels and fucking, are you dealing with somebody that's just fucking a, a, honestly making you mediocre? Then you are the one contracting that virus. That's all I got. It's a lot. But I don't know how much more I can give you when it comes to that power and that strength and that ability to really make that zip pop this week and really also at the same time explode into the temple of what you've always wanted in your life and having the ultimate life instead of a mediocre life. And that's up to you. And it's up to you and whether or not you're ready to catch up or if you're already on the trail to step into your highest character, into your highest path, and making sure that everything's aligned with the path that you choose. And if you have not chosen the spiritual path fully yet, this is Jupiter Neptune's exile, then you don't get no gifts. I'm sorry to say, those that are not connected with the divine, those that are not believing in the divine, there's not gonna be a lot of gifts around. All they're gonna see, and they're gonna be on fucking TV all this week. Fucking, the world is horrible, and oh my God, blah, 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 blah. That's how you know that they don't have a connection to source. They don't have a connection to God. Anybody complaining this week and this horrible energy? It's because they don't put that first. They don't even think about that. They don't, they don't even have the comprehension of that. And that's okay. I have compassion for them and I'm praying for their well-being and their greatness. But I am here to also be aware enough to know that there's a major gift here for you and there's a major portal to change the timeline to not be so heavy and to finally reap the benefits and reap the rewards and to reap the greatness in this life. And if you are not willing to take that on, and if you are not willing to face those things, then I wish you good luck still. And I love you still. But I know that I will see you from a great, great life on a boat that is into destiny and be looking at you through my periscope. I love you all very much. I appreciate you all very much. Please join HiveVibe.tv if you really want more info on the day-to-day -day basis and, of course, the Daily Tarot and the Weekly Sun Sign Horoscopes where I break all this down for you and how it affects you in your life. And if you want to learn how to do this and get all my secrets on how I do astrology in literally every level, and I have new secrets that I want to bring out. So I want everybody to know this info so I can start new schools. Go to HiveVibeTVSchool.com. It is where all of my courses right now are all packaged up into one package. You get everything. Super cheap price. Go to HighVibeTVSchool.com. This ends Sunday. Love you molt so much. Let's not let the world distract us. Let's be the new world. And let's disrupt what is no longer in service to the greatness of ourselves. And let's pop that like a zit within ourselves. And let's go for the ultimate. Let's have the ultimate. And let's see if you in yourself and all of us can come out of this week and see us at the end of this week with this Mercury retrograde and go, we all are ready for the radical new world that we are going to create from a better life. And we all did the work to face and to accept only the goodness 
and let go of the things that are just boring.